why, why do we have so many ways in essence? Why it is the, this is Ashkenaz, this is Sephardi, and this is this, and this is that? Because this is, you know, each soul comes from an, a, a place where it came from, and the way it serves Hashem is nogea to the etzim of the neshama. The etzim of the soul comes from a certain place. So this guy that he follows the minhagim of Ashkenaz, or the halacha of Ashkenaz, it's because his soul belongs to this channel. And this guy follows the halacha of Sephardi, so his soul belongs here, and he has to serve Hashem according to this ruling. The same way how we had Shtemesre, we had 12 tribes, and you know when, this, they, when they crossed the Yamsuf, it didn't open one like everybody thinks. It opened up 12 places, and each Shevet went from one path. Exactly, but each one in his path. So that's what we're doing here. We're all serving Hashem. This is serving Hashem here. This is serving Hashem here. I always give an example of like when you build a building. So you have in the building the architect, you have the engineer, you have the electrician, you have the plumber, you have the painter. Everybody comes to do his job. Now you can build a building for $500 million. If the building doesn't have toilets, the building is worth nothing. So even somebody who looks like the not so important and, and, and you know, a plumber, yeah, but if he's missing his piece, the building is not perfect. So the same thing with Am Israel. One is the plumber, one is the architect, one is the electrician, one is the painter. We're all building this spiritual building in this world. So this sect, they do this. This sect, they do that. This Jew does this. They're all good. Nothing is different. It's just another way of serving Hashem. So you see, for example, you know, Breslovs, they're all besimcha, everything is happy, and they're dancing and praying for three hours, and it's bodedut, and all these things. Well, they only do it. It means that they're doing something wrong. It means that the, the Sephardi person who doesn't do it, bodedut, and dances for Rabbi Nachman, he's wrong? No. Because the Breslovs, that's their path. And this guy, you know, the Litvish, they're very into studying and all this, that's their path. So each one has the, his job in this world, how he's serving Hashem, and it corresponds, it comes from his etzem and neshama, and we're all doing Avodat Hashem, just each one in a different way. When Mashiach will come, he will kind of make seder with everything. Probably. I, don't, I, never found, I never found any book or anything. I'm sure that, I, after all, I didn't read the whole Torah. But I never found any source or book that's saying, how we're going to serve Hashem when Matiya Sheikh comes, if it's going to be one path, or we're going to still have our minhagim and the way we do it. According to the Arizal, there's 12 gates in Shamaim, that every gate corresponds to one Shevet, and if I belong to Shevet Binyamin, my tfilot, they go through that gate, and everything that I do goes through that gate into Shamaim wherever it belongs. Yeah. And exactly. Exactly. The thing is that Barizal says but we don't know which Shvatim we are. If somebody comes and tells you, oh, I'm from Shevet Binyamin, I'm from Shevet Asher, nobody knows. Mashiach will come and tell you, you're from Binyamin, you're from Yehuda, you're from Asher. So I never found sources that actually say how it's going to be exactly, but I'm assuming that we're going to kind of be elevated and serve Hashem a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit different. But in the beginning, the first 40 years, it says that the world will be the same. We're going to live in houses. We're going to have clothes. We're not going to really, in the beginning, everything will be the same. Later on, we're not going to really have jobs because the nations will be like, we'll work. We'll support you. You go and study Torah because we're going to be the lights to the nations. There's a different opinions, but most of the opinions say that it will take at least 40 years to have Tchiat HaMetim. There's different opinions, because in one opinion is, the most of the opinions hold that we're not going to, when times of Mashiach, we're just going to study Torah. Yeah. We're going to be busy with mitzvot and Torah. Yeah. We're not going to have jobs. We're not going to... You don't need that, though, it's going to undo the... What's, what's the reason we have to work? Because of... Uh, mm -hmm. Because of... Uh, the sin of the... Yeah, the sin of Adam Arishon. We have to go and work. Not only that, it says that we're going to be, you know, you know, the whole world will see Hashem. 
We are going to be Mamlechet Kohanim Atem to you. We're going to be serving Hashem, you know, in Bet HaMikdash. We're going to study Torah. The non-Jews will be like, you study Torah. I'll pay the rent. I'll give you food. Just study Torah. Because the nations will see that we are the, the channel that the life for the world comes. Exactly. The thing is that the Goim, the nations, are part of the Geula. Even according to Nevrot of Gog and Magog, only two-thirds of the world die. So we're still left with two billion people. You know, two billion people. Are they going to come and inhabit the land of Israel with us? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, once the 40-year mark hits and comes Tchiyat Ametim, it's going to be such a high spiritual level. If, there, if there is a, the dead will get up, I trust me, we're not going to need jobs in this level of, of, of Yemot Mashiach. We're going to be, it's not going to be as we perceive it. But in the beginning, we're going to live, the world will be the same. Just that I know that the technology, that what we have now is nothing. The technology is not going to be normal. And you see how technology now is already preparing it that uh, you see that it that it's makes sense. Like this commercial that I saw, I think it's either Nissan, I don't remember, one of the big companies. You literally see, I'll find the video and I'll show it to you. You literally see how the cars, they're driving by themselves. They're all, you know, with sensors. And one car stops, all the cars stop. One car moves here, all the car moves. So you see how technology will be that there's not going to be car accidents. Yeah, but you really see how technology teaches us of Yemot HaMashiach. I remember like five years ago, people used to be amazed to wow, you can talk to somebody on the phone and talk to them and see them. Yeah, now five years ago? Three like, years ago. Three years, and now it's the most normal thing. Yeah. So think about it, that if somebody would come to you, let's say ten years ago, and tell you you would be able to talk with video on somebody on the other side of the world, it would be like, wow, that doesn't sound normal. Now every kid, you know, my kids, they Skype with my mom in Israel. It's a normal thing. My five-year-old, they know how to use the phone. But the technology that we have now, just look two, three years back. Don't look 10, 20 years back. Two years back. You know, there's a picture that's going on in Facebook. I see it all the time that you see, you see an iPhone, and then it says, and then on the other side, you see like a video camera this big and a, and a computer this big, and everything is like these huge things, and it says iPhone 20 years ago. So, but you see like a computer, like this huge computer and this video camera like that, a VCR like this, like a TV, and it's all compared to one little, little thing. So the technology that we're going to have when Mashiach comes is not going to be normal. And you see how it's evolving. So in the beginning, there's not going to be diseases, no wars, no anger, no problems. You know, people who are sick will suddenly become healthy. No mental issues, no yetzerara. Everything will be perfect. Now, all these things, a lot of these things will happen instantly. Nobody knows. Yeah. The, when you say... What about all the people that died, the family members and friends that, that were close to us that died and we were going to miss them? They'll, they'll, come, they'll come in Chiyad HaMetim. Are we going to be sad about it during the 40 years? Or we'll oh, during the 40 years there's not going to be any more death. But we'll be sad about the people that passed away. No, because we know they're coming soon. And we'll be alive. Yeah. Well, we don't know exactly about the physical part because we know that till the year 6,000, we're going to be in what's called Yemot HaMashiach. That's 226 years. So let's say Chas V'Shalom Mashiach comes in, I don't want to even think about it, but let's say Chas V'Shalom Mashiach comes in two years. Chas V'Shalom. You have 224 years that the world is the same. Only in the 6,000 years, we're going to, no, uh, we're not. We're going to look beautiful and young, yeah. No more what cosmetics. What if you're 95 years old and they're going to start tapping? Yeah. They're going to stay as they are, but... The yeah, the, I know, I think the wrinkles will you know, wear off, hair will start growing. That I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and the white hair will fall off probably. But the thing is that we know that when we hit the year 6000, then we move, like uh, we're getting upgraded, and we're going to go into a whole millennium, Yom Shekulo Tov which is a day, you know, it's a Shabbos. Six days, we have Sunday to Friday, corresponds to the 6,000 years. And Shabbos is the 7,000 year, from 6,000 to 7,000. So we go to 1,000 a, a years of Shabbat. This is going to be a very advanced 
stage of Mashiach. And after that, we go all to Olam Abba. Huh? You do as many mitzvot as you can. You refrain from doing any averot. 